Kia we're here today at the National Rural Health Conference and I have here with me Mark Ryan. Welcome Mark. And Hello. you're doing your talk today on AMR, which is animal, no sorry, antimicrobial resistance yes. and one health. And you're looking at the way that animals, the animal role in human and environmental health. Yes, that's How right. these all into play. That's right. Is that right? Okay. So um, your title, um, AMR and One Health, What's, what does One Health mean? Well, One Health is the intersection of humans, animals and the environment. Uh, it's broader than that, so it's, it's, it brings together multi-disciplines, particularly science disciplines, but essentially it's where, uh, at that intersection, where, where humans and animals and the environment mix. Uh, I think that's very relevant for us as veterinarians. We, we work in... Um, Obviously, every animal is attached to a human, so we, we're probably a little bit more used to working with the people side of things as well as the animals. And then, of course, in the environmental space, uh, in the production animal uh, area, all of these animals are, are kept on farms and whatnot, so that environmental impact is quite relevant to us. So um, for us, I think that the One Health um, concept kind of sits quite well. It makes sense to us. So I'm going to talk about that. Um, it certainly won't be alien to the to the medical people here, <laughs> but I'm going to introduce it from a veterinary perspective. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to, uh, probably the, the prime topic currently within uh, One Health is antimicrobial resistance, so I'll, I'll touch on that as well. Okay, cool. And what in particular are you going to touch on with the antimicrobial resistance? Well, I think um, one of the things we don't know is, is the linkages between animals and humans in terms of AMR, mm. uh, if there are any, and if, if there are any, um, to what extent and what significance they are. We do know that um, in New Zealand we're very low antibiotic users in, in, in animals, so we're the third lowest country in the world for antimicrobial use. So that's a positive. So we don't use, uh, by anybody's standards, very many antibiotics at all. We don't use them for growth promotion. We haven't done that for 20 years. So our farming systems are, are fairly unique in that respect. But there are areas where we think we could do a better job in terms of antimicrobial use. So I'll talk a bit about that, and then um, I don't have enough information from the human side of things uh, to, to really understand that, but um, I think that what we do need to understand is the level of interaction between humans and animals and how that might impact antimicrobial resistance transfer. It's quite interesting to say we're quite low in the use of um, antibiotics, given that we're such a large dairy industry. Yes, yeah. that's right. Um, I, I kind of thought it would be quite the opposite, really. But, well, um, our dairy industry, um, it's rel relatively recent data. We published some data last year. Yeah. Our dairy industry, for example, is around about a third to a quarter of the usage of the UK dairy okay. industry. Okay. Is uh, that because we're more outdoors than yep, men Yep, we have less disease. Yeah. Yep, we have less disease. We're more extensive. We probably don't have the production that, that they have in the UK. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we're in a good position, but we, we could always do better, so that's the point. And we have a goal in the NZVA, the New Zealand Vet Association, has a goal of um, reducing our antimicrobial use to almost zero by 2030. Uh, so we just, we just retain it for when we really need it. And uh, we think we can get there. Uh, we'll make some, yeah. some sensible decisions and, and change some of the way we do things, we think we can get there. Mm. And I can mention the vets are quite um, strict about what they use with antibiotics and, and animals as well. Uh, yes, yeah. some are and some aren't. Okay. Um, <laughs> And you know, it's uh, one of the issues, one of the things I will talk about is the Mycoplasma bovis outbreak yeah. currently, because if we let that become endemic in New Zealand, that would change our antibiotic use because we would have more disease to treat. So we're, we're quite we're quite focused on um, on eradicating that. That would be quite key for us. Mm. That's down the South Island at the moment, isn't the big the outbreak? Well, it, yeah. mostly in the South Island. Yeah. There's a, there's a bit of it in the North Island, we okay. think, but we don't know exactly. So yeah. Very good. And so. AMR and the role of, of how it is in the, in the animals, are we linking that back to the human interaction, like behaviours and things like that? Or? Yeah, yeah. We, so that's the part we don't know. Okay. And we know that animals are really beneficial. Um, so um, traditionally we've thought of some of the zoonoses that animals can spread, and, and obviously there's always a risk with animals, but, but the reward is much higher. So um, New Zealand's a very high pet ownership, so mm -hmm. I think we're 64% of our households have pets, which is the second highest in the world. Um, and in rural areas, it's about 78%. So um, that's a large number of households that have pets. Cats are our favourite pet, uh, and dogs are closely behind that. There's lots of benefits that have been shown in num a number of studies around um, human health benefits, you know, mental health, uh, physical well-being, getting out and whatnot, but having pets. It's slightly in decline. Uh, we think that's because of the increase in, in urban population. So it's something we, we're sort of aware of. Um, we think, obviously, that pets and animals in general are, are beneficial for mental and physical well-being. So um, I think it's, uh, it's something to promote around uh, you know, 
the value of having pets and animals uh, alongside you. Mm. It's quite interesting because um, I was just talking before earlier about um, the way that we interact with pets and how that's kind of evolved. Yes. Um, being, for example, having a dog outside um, has now been allowed inside to the fact that it's now been allowed on the bed. Yep. Uh, sort of this, this interplay and, and how it'll be interesting to see in the future how that. How that well, and we see out. that in very much in um, how pet owners interact, uh, and most of this stuff comes from overseas in some of these cities. But uh, you know, having pets that have uh, chips on them, some sort of like pet Fitbits. Um, many people have cameras now in the in the houses, so, so whilst they're at work, they can see their pet. The pet can interact with the camera. The mm -hmm. pet can send them a video. Uh, we can monitor pets what they're doing, and and for us as veterinarians, that's fascinating because we can get a lot of data from um, how these pets are interacting. I think that's mostly positive. I think people then can in, intervene earlier in disease prevention. So getting back to the AMR story, <coughs> you know, if, if we can prevent disease, that will reduce antibiotic use. So the more of this sort of data that we can gather and the more people are aligned to their pets, I think that's a positive, a positive thing. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming along and having, sharing us about your talk that's going to be coming up tomorrow, isn't it? Tomorrow lunchtime, I think. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much, Mark. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.